wanna run from my given disaster Speed away from the holy mind Pride That's where I never thought it would matter Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here in this beautiful villa called Villa Poem and I am here with Milena and we are going to be taking photos here today and walking you through everything. I am going to link everybody down below so make sure to check them out. And before we get into this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell button to not miss any of my future uploads and let's get right into the video. Psst, you all know what's coming. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that will help you make your dream website, portfolio, or an online shop become a reality. Squarespace has hundreds of beautiful templates, so you will definitely find something that suits you and your personal style. You can build a professional portfolio website in a matter of hours, and you will be able to customize it every step of the way. So it's so you that nobody can deny it's not. As we all know, social media presence is power, and with Squarespace, you'll be able to auto-post all your content to Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr with proper tags and descriptions. Finally, Squarespace helps you with the marketing, they help you with SEO, as well as some plugins for Instagram stories and so on, as well as share buttons so your followers can give you some juicy shoutouts on their social media. If that sounds like something you'd like to try, make sure to go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you're ready to go, use my code squarespace.com slash Anita to receive 10% off your first purchase. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to achieve the best results using natural light that changes and that moves around. I'm going to be giving you tips about how to achieve the best results possible and how to move around with your light and so on. So for this particular look, because we are shooting and because the look is fully gold, I wanted to have, you know, kind of using the doors and so on because they look so nice with it. That's gorgeous. So kind of like maybe for the few here, because I'm so far, it kind of maybe like you're like, I'm not here. You're like, just like, oh, you know. Yes, perfect. Yes, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. When I started planning the shoot at Villa Poem, I was super excited because their interior was very Marrakeshi. And as you guys know, I went into Morocco last year and I really loved it. So it was great to be transformed back into the space. It was super gold and opulent and just really rich. And I really adored the colors of the place. So I decided that when I'm going to be styling, because I mostly style my swimmer shoots myself, I am going to go for swimwear and for pieces that are in similar tones to the location. So I went for a lot of golds, a lot of blues because it matched with the pool. I got a little gold see-through dress that I thought would look really nice. Um, I also picked up some big earrings and in general just some jewelry to spice it up a bit and I thought it would look really nice. The model arrived with hair and makeup done already. We did wet her hair because I thought it would look a bit better and it would fit the idea a bit better. And she also had her sandals that were kind of like tied up sandals and it worked really nice as well because it really matched with the dress and the other outfits. Everybody always asks me how do you approach a villa or a location for a photo shoot and usually the way I go about it is I either DM them on Instagram because that's usually the most direct way or if they don't get back to me I would usually email and ask. Sometimes I will call but because I'm in Bali usually trying an email is the best bet and what I usually do is I establish ground rules. I ask the um, place would it be available for a photo shoot. I state that I'm going to only need it for about two or three hours that it's going to be maybe just me and the model and the videographer so they know that the team is going to be small and then if they are interested we can establish what kind of return do they want from it um, usually a lot of places settle for being able to use photos on their Instagram or even just getting tagged in the photos. Some places would like to have video from it as well so it's all depending on the actual place. It's beautiful yeah the light is oh oh my oh my god stay like that don't move you'll die not not literally die <gasps> look at this uh, oh my god this is oh so my god weird. In this 
particular shoot we started shooting at 2.30 and there's a few reasons for it. First thing first, I usually prefer to shoot in the morning and I usually aim for that, but unfortunately the location wasn't available so we had to stick with the afternoon. And we decided to shoot a bit earlier because I still had a second model after my first shoot and I wanted to make sure that I fit them both before sunset at 6.30. So when we started at 2.30 it was still quite uh, bright and it was still quite unworkable in terms of the light. Um, it was very difficult because you get lots of panda eyes and lots of harsh shadows and the light is just very very bright and hard to work with so for the first few shots we actually ended up hiding in the shade we ended up you know putting the model in the doorway and so on just to kind of shelter her from the sun a tiny bit and it actually worked really well Anytime I know I'm going to be working with direct sunlight, especially in places like Bali, I always go for a very early cold time. I usually maybe start at 6 a.m., 6.30 a.m. and then work until 9.30 a.m. And then I have a big break if I do have another shoot and then if I shoot in the afternoon, I would maybe only do four until six until sunset basically because that's the easiest hours to work with in terms of light um the worst thing you can do for yourself is just shoot midday shoot in the harshest light because it makes it so extremely difficult to work with um, the lighting that you're given your model will have panda eyes she will have loads of unflattering shadows on her and you don't really want that What I loved about this location in particular was the fact that there was so many reflections happening everywhere. You know, the place itself was pretty bright as it was. The gold was kind of working like a big reflector in general. Um, when I shoot outdoors in this kind of situation, I usually do avoid shooting backlit because I find the light is too harsh. But if I find that maybe my shadows are a bit too drastic in the image, shooting against, um, you know, light floor like this is always great because it reflects so much light. It's the same with the pool. There's always some nice water reflection um, that go back onto the model and it just exposes her skin so much nicer and it gets rid of those unwanted harsh shadows or panda eyes. One thing that I've learned shooting on location with natural light, especially if it's direct sunlight, is to always work with the light and always follow it around rather than the other way around. Because as you guys know, the sun doesn't care. It's going to move regardless if you move it with it or not. So whenever I see a nice spot and a nice location and, you know, maybe like nice shadows or anything, I will just go there and shoot immediately because usually within 5-10 minutes, the sun will move around and change and then you will lose that nice location. So whenever I am shooting and i see a nice spot i will just go there take some test shots see how it looks i will also always make sure to move my model around in different angles because sometimes you know certain angles will just work better for the location and in terms of uh, lighting so it's always very beneficial So usually if I get into my location and I see that the light is maybe not the most workable or it might be a bit harsh, I usually look for nice shaded areas that I could put the model in. And as you see for me, I found it in the nice uh, doorway of the room. I think it looked so beautiful. There was a, a big glass uh, Rosetta window, I think it's called, um, and it was reflecting the light so beautifully onto the big palm and we just got such nice shots. And you know, um, then we put her outside of the room as well, so it's always very helpful to have those kind of locations as a backup if you can't shoot in the direct sunlight and sometimes even though you do want to shoot in the direct sunlight it's just not ideal because it's just very harsh and it's very difficult to work with especially if you're just beginning so always look for um you know locations that are a bit more in the shade that aren't as exposed to the sun and it should work the charm As the sun started changing its location a tiny bit, I actually spotted that there was some really nice shadow being cast against the pool and against the walls of the location and I really loved that. I think it looked so beautiful. So we ended up moving to the other side of the location and just shooting against that. In this kind of situation, I always make sure that I expose for the model's skin. I usually also underexpose my images rather than overexposing. So I would rather have a darker image that I can then brighten 
skin in Lightroom no problem rather than overexposing and then struggling with the skin. So this is one big advice that I have for you guys. Always underexpose your images ever so slightly. Always make sure that the skin has no blown out areas because it's really going to affect the overall quality of the image. Okay, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much, Melinda, for you. being my lovely model. If you did like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys next time.